Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com. What follows is the first of two parts of a conversation that I had with my friend Travis about the current slate of comic book-based television shows. I hope you enjoy. All right, well, today Travis and I are getting together to chat about uh, comic book TV and probably some movies as well. Travis, would you say that we are living in a veritable golden age of television uh, as it relates to comic books? Would I call it golden? Um... Not, not in the sense of golden age as if uh, what we have is, you know, the pinnacle, the, the best ever, uh, you, know, you know, like the, the height of what, what uh, comic book TV could possibly be, but just in the sense of look at how many shows we have oh. to enjoy on television now. Right. Based on comic book properties, it's amazing. It is. It is. It's. It's. Um, you know, I, I definitely can remember us in our youth. There was no way that there was even a, a thought of a possibility of having the level of TV production that's either out right now and seems to be in the works. How much stuff is like right on the cusp of potentially supposedly being shows that is actually pretty mind-boggling when I think when I think about it. You know, it's just like no. You know, there's no way. But right, right, right. Are. Yeah, exactly. So when we were kids, you know, uh, uh, knee high to a grasshopper, as my grandfather used to say, um, maybe a little taller than that. Anyway, <laughs> when we were kids, though, growing up reading comics, thinking about the the kinds of uh, of entertainment uh, that comic books could become. You know, mo I think mostly we we kind of just expected movies, right? Um, but but at the time, there was on television, as I recall, The Incredible Hulk mm -hmm. and and The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not sure if it was called The Amazing Spider-Man or what. Now I, I don't remember that. Um, but we had those two shows at least. That was the 19... That was what? 1978? 79? Somewhere around there? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which, is, which is about the time I started reading comics in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we, had, we had those shows and they were not the you know the best quality, I'll say. You know, uh, I, I remember thinking or watching the Spider-Man show, which I you know I loved back then. But uh, you know, it was basically a guy dressed up in a spider costume with with a rope attached to his wrist. You know, and and the whole webbing effects that they did on that show were just laughable. They really were. I you know I remember as a kid I liked The Incredible Hulk. I thought that was a cool show as a kid. I didn't even think Spider-Man was a cool show that was a kid though, because I was a hardcore Spider-Man fan at the time. And everything that he did frustrated me to no end. You know, the whole tightrope walk across, you know, his big thick spider web and him almost falling all the time. <laughs> that just always infuriated me as a kid. It's like, come on, he's Spider Man. That would be he could walk that on two fingers. Come on. But but yeah. High quality television. And and you know, with the Hulk, um, which I, I do I do agree. I think the Hulk was a better TV show in general. But I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that um, Bill Bixby was involved in it. Mm. You know, he he was a he was a pretty good actor. Mm -hmm. But the effects, you know, the effects with oh. Lou Ferrigno's green painted skin and you know all that stuff that was you know that was that was you know it's probably a good thing that they didn't uh, play that up as much as they could have uh, in the show. Of course, I I didn't watch the show later on. Uh, so I, I, you know, they may have they may have changed things. I remember watching it for the, at least the first few seasons, and then I watched the really bad <laughs> uh, TV movie specials they did. You know, I, I'm thinking of when Daredevil showed up, and Thor. Um, they're, 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 those just weren't that good. <laughs> yeah. Oh oh oh, and and let's not forget, you know, talking about the golden age, the pinnacle of 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 comic book TV, Travis, <laughs> the Captain America movies. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh yes, fun Good times, time. fun times. <laughs> but anyway, that's the past. Mm. Uh, what we have today, however, are a bunch of new, or well, relatively new shows. So I think we're going to talk today about looking at my notes here, uh, in no particular order. Um, Flash, the new Flash TV series. Uh, Agents of Shield. I know that you're not a big fan of that. Uh, Gotham. Arrow, Constantine, and which Travis, I have to really fight to, when I say that because I'm so used to saying Constantine. 
you know, uh, yeah. which is how it's supposed to be pronounced according to according to the the uh, the writers, the English writers. Well, that's interesting because I know there are English people who say that it's Constantine too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? See, I've yeah. heard Alan Moore talk about how it's supposed to be Constantine. Yeah. Uh, and, Alan and some Moore, of the others. Whatever. I know. I know. Anyway, but 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 on the show, I mean, the show actually says Constantine. So right. We'll we'll do it. plus I, just easier to say I think than Constantine, rolls off the tongue better. Mm. Uh, is that it? I think that's it as far as the TV shows. And then Walking Mock, we'll, Dead, if you want to throw oh, it. Oh, that, that's true. Oh well, yeah, I do have I do have a list of other shows here that we, that uh, I wanted to mention. Uh, but yeah, Walking Dead is is the big one, right? One of the big ones. I actually don't watch that show. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you know, I don't anymore. To be honest, I mean, I I used to. I. Got a little fatigued with it, but yes, I, exactly. I hear. But I hear everybody talk about this season's like you know, they changed it all up and it's all exciting again or whatever. But yeah, well, I read the book and I know you know the the TV show is an adaptation of some of the stories in in the comic. Sure. So I believe because my daughter and and her fiance are are they don't have cable or satellite, so. They are coming. They've asked to. They've asked me to record The Walking Dead every Sunday for them because he's a big fan. Mm-hmm. And so they come over now on Sundays. And and as we record this, uh, they'll be coming over tonight to watch the last two or three weeks worth of episodes. Mm-hmm. So I've been seeing a few bits of them uh, in the last few weeks. So I know where they're at in the show is. Uh, a pass point uh, that I'm aware of where I've read in the comic because I read the trades. Mm-hmm. I, I don't read the the monthly comic, so I I read the trades. I'm up to volume 19 of the trades. I don't know what those issues are. I think it's past 100. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe even several issues past 100. Anyway, um, they're not quite up to where I am at in the comic based on the TV show. But then again, I could be. I I don't know what they've what they've done on the show. Uh, as far as mixing up the the timeline of certain stories, so maybe they have done stuff uh, that is later. I well, don't know. I have no yeah, idea. And there, yeah, and there's stuff that's different because they just <clears throat> they completely change some of the stuff. I mean, it's not it's not mirroring the comic directly anyway. So. Right, 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 right. Do we? Or is there anything else we want to talk about The Walking Dead? <laughs> since neither of us watched the show. <laughs> Other than it's it's huge. I mean. It seems to be well, a big phenomenon with with uh, more than just comic book fans. Right, and can we say that basically, I, you know, where would we be at with the other TV shows if it wasn't as big as it is? Do you think that the the success of The Walking Dead has something to do with all the the slate of other TV shows that we will talk about? I think so. In terms of them getting greenlit. I, I mean, I think so. I mean, look, it's it was clearly a comic book for a very long time before it was ever a TV show, and it certainly seems to be an extremely popular TV show. Um, you know, with a with a big audience and getting a bigger audience, it seems, and it's captured a whole audience that ha- clearly has nothing to do with the comic books. But there's a bleed over there um, of of people. Um, certainly, I've I've gone to cons and have people staying in the same lines as me that aren't comic book people, but they're buying comic book merchandise because of the show. So I think so. I think it has to have a factor in there somewhere. I don't know. I mean, not not to say that 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 um, there still wouldn't be a push to some degree because obviously there's the movies are huge, you know the um, superhero movies are huge and stuff. But I, I think that I think it has to have a factor in how successful it is. So let's try stuff on the small screen too, and and make it somewhat serious as opposed to you know Batman sixty six, <laughs> you know, which is coming to DVD soon for for fans of that show. Yeah. I mean that was a big deal when they announced that. I think oh, that was a uh, San Diego Comic Con when they announced that. I think mm-hmm. might have been New York. Uh, I don't remember now. Um, but uh, you know there there was a uh, a pent up desire, uh, shall we say, for for the Batman sixty six TV show uh, DVD series. So mm-hmm. coming out on DVD, I should say. Anyway, yeah, I don't I don't think I have anything else to say about uh, Walking Dead other than so I did watch the very first season, and I watched the first episode of the second season and then we kind of stopped only because uh, my wife got in, uh, involved in the show wanting to watch the show 
and uh, getting us together at the same time to watch something is extremely difficult. I don't know how it is with with your family, Travis, but I, I, we we can't seem to find time to set aside uh, to to watch shows together for the most part. So uh, we got way behind on it, and then and now we're at what what's what season are we at now on The Walking Four. Dead? Four? Fourth, something like that. So so yeah, we're 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 way behind. <laughs> but I know my wife wants to continue to watch the show so she's going to restart the show uh, based on the the stuff that I've seen from the episodes that my daughter and her fiance uh, have been watching I you know I just I, I guess I don't want to watch people being horrible to each other <laughs> but you're okay with, but you're okay with reading it it's clearly that's what's in the book too <laughs> well okay I'll you know I'll be quite honest um, I I ordered Volumes 20 and 21, I believe, and I got volume 20 in my last comic book order. That may be my last uh, Walking Dead comics that I read because I'm, like you mentioned before, the fatigue of the show. Uh, I that's setting in with me at the comics. Not that it, not that the comic isn't a well-produced comic. It, it, the story is still great. The characters are awesome. It's just there's only so much. Like I said, uh, humanity being horrible to itself that I can I can take, mm. uh, and so I see that you know, and, and it's even more visceral on on the TV show, and I just I don't know I <laughs> call me old fashioned, but you know I, I prefer something a little more optimistic I guess. Yeah, I don't know why I quit watching it. I just did. Well, okay, so let's speaking of optimistic, let's start out with. Uh, Let's start with a flash because I think of that show as as pretty upbeat, pretty pretty light as opposed to dark, mm -hmm. and and it's, uh, to me it's a lot of fun. So what do what do you think of the new Flash TV series on the CW? Uh, I I like it for that reason. It is really it's really fluffy. You know, I don't see it as having a lot of you know real content, and I and when you know when serious stuff happens, I have a hard time taking it really serious. You know, as far as the emotional content of it, but I, you know, as far as being a superhero type TV show, I, I do think it's fun. I mean, just the, you know, it ha it has a very upbeat, high energy. The actor who's playing um, the Flash um, is a charming person. He comes across mm -hmm. as as very as very charming. Um, I'm not a big Flash fan as far as you know reading a lot of the books and whatnot, so I have no idea if his portrayal even remotely mirrors. Any version of Barry Allen whatsoever, I have you know no idea. But you know, I, I like him. I like the cast of characters that are around around him and, and stuff. You know, there's some either interesting or absurd plot lines. I mean, with the whole guy that's in charge of the science stuff and what he's up to. Not, not to spoil anything, but um, you know, clearly he's he's something other than what he seems. I was bothered when the show first started out because, of course, the first episode, they it seems to that they kill off the Weather Wizard. I mean, they kill him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like thinking, oh, great. Every show, they're going to kill a villain. How long is it going to be before there's no villains left? Plus, they kill somebody, like, right out of his own rogues gallery. You know, and then they introduce, like, in other shows, they have The Mist, which is a um, Firestorm, you know, villain. To me, I mean, at least that's what I... I mean, I don't know. Is 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 the mist a originally a or... originally a golden age Flash, if I remember correctly, oh, really? going? Oh, okay. Sadly, so I, I only know him from the um from Firestorm. It's like, oh, well, that's a Firestorm villain kind of thing. And of course, there is a character in the show that is half of potentially Firestorm that was in the that was in the show to start out with. So I don't know if that's going to become a a thing. And I, don't I, know. I think so. I th I think I remember reading that. Uh, well, okay, the the they, the, they, the producer know, or the yeah, go ahead. I know that they've that they've supposedly cast um, Professor Stein, which is the other half of Firestorm. Right. So right, and, but and, I don't and, know. And the producer the producer is uh, a big Firestorm fan, I guess, or or one of the producers or or the head writer. I don't know one one big wig involved with the show uh, really loves Firestorm. So and and uh, 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 Caitlin Snow, the 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 one. 
the, is the current the, is the physician is the current um, yeah so yeah she's she she uh, well her fiance was named Ronnie right right mm -hmm. which is the other half of Firestorm right which is the body so, half of Firestorm yeah yeah so Firestorm's gonna come to Flash that's gonna be awesome right if it happens <laughs> yeah I mean I I'm a huge Firestorm fan I would be I'd be thrilled with that curious to see how they pull all the special effects that they could go oh, on yeah. there. And, and kind of what version of Firestorm do they lay out for us, you know? Right, and, right. Because there's some different tones that Firestorm has had over the years as to what that would be like. The other thing I'm, 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 one of the things I am struggling with with the show is versus the Arrow show. And in the Arrow show, they took every, all these names that, that if you know the DC Universe, you know all these names. And they just kind of threw them out there, attached them to whatever. They don't match up to what the comic book is. They just use these names in weird, in different ways. So now we've got this other newer CW show, which, what, it's three episodes in? Three or four episodes in? Uh, four, I think, yeah. I, I've watched four at least. Right, so it's four episodes in. And there's all these names they're throwing out that are DC names, and I'm not sure how I'm supposed to take them. Do I just take them at face value? It just happens to be that you know, the lead female scientist is named after the current um, Killer Frost. Is she right. going to be come Killer Frost, or is they, are they just using that name because that name's there, it's available, kind of a thing. So I'm kind of like, are they giving me hints as a big DC fan, or or do I take it like the arrow and just kind of don't worry about what the name is because the name may not mean anything at all in comparison to what's going on? Because that's kind of how I was with the whole Ronnie thing until I had heard that they had supposedly cast somebody to be um, the other half of Firestorm. And I'm like, okay, well, if they cast the other half, of course, they may still never use them. They may just be using those names. I have no idea. Well, I, the... and yeah, exactly. But we're, you know, we're four episodes into a new, you know, the first season of a new TV show. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want to go at least, you know, five years, seven years, whatever, or, or or if they're trying to follow the Smallville model, you know, ten years. So yeah, there, there's there's a lot of time and a lot of room for growth. In this this TV universe that they've set up through, you know, starting with Arrow, well, is it? Because because this Arrow it has nothing to do with the Arrow that showed up in Smallville, right? Smallville has nothing to do with this show whatsoever. Okay, but but I mean it was, but it, well, behind the scenes though that's that's not true because uh, the they had the Arrow character in Smallville and and he was pretty popular. And then they, they uh, I think that the network decided to develop a TV show on that, you know, a version of that character, which is why we got Arrow in the first place, right? That's that's kind of uh, okay. That's, that's kind of how I saw it anyway. Hmm. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, that that I don't know. But clearly, the Flash they've spun the Flash out of, you know, they put that character in some of the Arrow shows to spin him out into its own show, which to me was right. very smart. It's clearly the same audience as watching both shows, with the exception of you. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, to me it just makes sense. If they were ever to do another CW version of, of another superhero show, it would be crazy for them not to plant them in one of these two shows and somehow have it spin out of that. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's exactly what I was thinking about the Firestorm character. I, how much you want to bet that, not not probably not this season. I I wouldn't think they'd do it this season, but, or you know they could introduce the characters and then you know two or three years down the road, then spin Firestorm the TV series out of the Flash. Cool. Pretty soon CW is going to be yeah. Pretty soon CW is going to end up with with um all, you know all week long comic book pro uh, programming. <laughs> I, can watch, I can I can watch a I can watch a superhero show every a week. Even the stinky ones, I guess. So <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you mentioned uh the Dr. Caitlin Snow. So she, you know, her her name is uh, the name of Killer Frost. Uh we also have Cisco Ramon who is Vibe. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Cisco and his his penchant for uh, coming up with the superhero or supervillain names. I love that. I love that because it's one of the things. Is like, okay, how do in a in a world without superheroes or superheroes are just starting out? Uh, yeah, how do these names come about? I mean, 
Is mm-hmm. it really every? It, does really every villain just suddenly decide I'm going to come up with some kooky name and call myself something? Or you know, or is it the newspapers that start naming them the Blur or whatever? And and you know that whole that whole thing. I don't know. I like that. It's a good to me. That's a cool way to to put them you know, put these names out there because we're not always seeing like well. In most of these cases, we're not seeing any real character development in these characters as far as them. We're seeing them grow into whatever villain or hero they're going to be and them come up with their own name or, or whatever. Um, so, I mean, well, four issues in, we finally get a what seems to be potentially a reoccurring character, a reoccurring villain in the right. show in the case of, of Captain Cole, which I, I like this version of Captain Cole. I thought he was pretty cool. So okay, let's let's talk about him for a second. Uh, um, I want to get back to some of these other characters as well, but uh, yeah. So so we start off with like you said, they, they kill the weather uh, weather weather wizard off. Um, although the I guess the prevailing theory is is that the other guy in the plane with him will end up becoming the new weather wizard, recurring weather wizard, if they decide to bring the weather wizard back. Which okay. why would they not? Considering that the weather God, Wizard? Why do yeah, I keep saying that? It's hard to say. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, blow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mesh the two words together and just call him the Wizard. The Wizard. No, no. Uh, the Weather Wizard is such a, such a huge Flash villain. So I mean, they, they, I would think that they wouldn't want to bring him back. Um, what was, who was the second one? Was it the Mist that was the second one? Yeah, it was the Mist, and then, and then. Um, oh, the Multiplex. Third, multiplex. Who's that's? Is it Multiplex? Go ahead. Are you gonna tell me Multiplex is a Flash villain too, and not a Arstorm villain? That I don't remember, but but uh, okay. where I was going with that was so they kill off Weather Wizard, they kill off Multiplex theoretically, and right. then the Mist is the first one that they capture when they turn the when they convert the Collider, yeah. right, into yep. a prison, a, prison. <laughs> a metahuman prison, yeah. And so now, yeah, so now we have we have that component of the show, which I'm glad. See, that's the thing I hated about the Batman movies was, uh, you know, beginning with. Um, Everybody dies. With the, yeah, right. With uh, oh god, what's his name? Who was the director of of the 1989 Batman film? Why can't I think of it? Burton. Right. So beginning with the Burton films and continuing on, you know, through the latest Nolan films, you know, the villains get killed off, and yeah. and you you rob yourself of the storytelling potential uh, of some of these characters, you know, recurring over time. Now I get it with movies, you know they. <laughs> You get two hours plus if if it's a Nolan film. His new Interstellar film is almost three hours long, and I really want to see that. But it's like, holy God, that's a long time to sit in a theater. Anyway, uh, uh, you, so 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 you can't, you really don't have the the the, the real estate if if you don't mind my mixing these metaphors up, uh, in the movies to afford bringing back these characters, uh, in a way that is is, you know, forwards the, the character development or forwards the story. Um, but in TV, you do. You have that time. You have those episodes. You have those hours to build and to, re, you know, have these characters recur uh, and, you know, and, and ratchet up the dramatic tension between the, char- you know, the hero and the villain. So, so I, I was glad to see that they're doing that. And that was one of the things that I didn't like about Arrow was that he, you know, not, not, I'm not talking about supervillains uh, in particular because I don't really know that much about that aspect of Arrow. Mm-hmm. But one of the things I did not like about the show when it, you know, because I watched the first four first episodes season. of the first season, he kills everybody. I mean, he yeah. he's a murderer. Right. First right? season, he first season he whacks them and stacks them. Man, he he, he <laughs> whacks and stacks. That's good. <laughs> basically, I mean, he's just you know, you know, he's got a big pile stuck in the corner of bodies of people he's mowed down without a doubt. But yeah, I part, hear I hear that's changed. It's part, it's part of in the case of Arrow, it's part of a long term. They've got a five year plan, a five year plan of development of the character and where they think he's going to go. And the first year, that's what they wanted. They wanted him, you know, full of vengeance, full of hate. Um, he's going to fix the problem permanently, and that's his version of fixing the problem permanently. They end the show on dramatic in dramatic fashion, and uh, with the first season, and they come back with the second season with him. Um, you know, having done a considerable amount of soul searching with what happened at the end of the first season, and he's changed his attitude about that to almost to a detriment. I mean, now they've actually got shows where he's got some of his best friends around him saying, "Why are you letting these people live? This is nuts. <laughs> you should be putting these people down." And and he refuses to, you know, to, to sometimes to his own detriment. He is not hmm. 
willing to kill people anymore. That is not what he does. Okay. Well, hey, let's come back to that. Okay. That sounds really interesting. Okay. Kind of makes me want to watch the show. Let's see. What else do do we want to say about? Oh, and okay. So then, uh, oh yeah. Let's. Um, what started this off? Uh, I wanted to talk about Captain Cold. Uh huh. So, so now, yeah, now we have uh, a character that not only isn't derived from the the uh, the the collider accident, accident or whatever it is, yeah. But he has, so he has, he actually has a, a cold gun. Mm-hmm. Um, although I thought Travis, <laughs> the fact that you know he 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 goes to the weapons dealer and gets that cold gun and mm-hmm. then and then whacks the guy. <laughs> yeah. Wax and stacks him. Um, <laughs> I like that phrase now. Uh, but anyway, so he whacks the guy. I mean, he takes everything, but what happens when he has to fix it? Because he's not the originator of the cold gun, which Leonard Snart, I believe, in the comics. Yeah. Originally, did create right. a cold gun. Is that right? Yeah, and certainly in the New Fifty Two, he has. Yeah, you know, the character in the New Fifty Two certainly created his own cold gun. Right. He lost his powers. He lost his powers, and then created, and then created the gun to replace his powers. Right. Right. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Other than he'll kidnap what's his face and make him fix the gun because he's the guy that made the gun. Future oh my plot. God. You, 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 yeah, you just, you just, you just uh, spoiled yeah. a future plot. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. My second job as a CW writer has just been blown. <laughs> I'm also the person responsible for the dramatic piano music. Anytime anything seriously emotional happens for the show, I, that's that's me. I... <laughs> so, what, but uh, in general, what do you think of the portrayal of this Captain Cold? I, you know, I liked him. I mean, he's methodical. He's business. It's you know, I, I don't know. I, I. I, I thought it worked. I thought it worked for what, you know, for what the show is. I thought that that um, he doesn't strike me as crazy. Obviously, cold and calculated and whatnot. I like how they, because he doesn't really have powers, and I've always kind of wondered. I always kind of thought that Stark maybe did because he, how fast he can draw and shoot, to tag the Flash in the comic. I always kind of wondered if he, technically, was powered in some sense. But I don't know. I, I liked it. I mean, I thought he. I, I thought he was the most interesting villain to date uh, than from the show. You know, they conveniently gave him, you know, he ended up working out having the parka and, you know, I don't know. So that was kind of cool. Well, he, he's the only villain so far that we've seen that isn't one-dimensional. You know, either, I let's see, uh, Multiplex and The Mist, they they both, their their motive was revenge or revenge, some, right. you know, wanting to kill someone for, for a wrong uh, thrust upon them by this person. Mm-hmm. Um, who, who was the first one? I'm, oh, Weather Wizard. Weather. Yeah, he was just he was just a guy causing chaos and robbing banks. So yeah, the the Captain Cold that we see potentially has uh, a bit more of a, a character uh, to develop. Well, they've already given they've already given him more background. I mean, because clearly the the detective guy I'm drawing a blank on his name. Iris's dad. Um, you know, he has some sort of history knowledge of the guy, of his behavior, of how he does oh. stuff. I, well, I mean, yeah, because he's a per. I mean, he he he's he's committed crimes in Central City already, so right. he's known to the police. Right. So so they already gave him more more background than than the other characters. And whatnot, That's so. true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the 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 police in this, and then there's one more or a couple more characters too. I want to talk about. So you have you have um, Detective West. Uh-huh. Who is uh, the uh, the the father figure? Is what I want to say uh-huh. uh, for Flash or for Barry, because <laughs> he's not he's not technically called the Flash, although they they they've hinted at it. Um, it's coming, I think, in the next broadcast he to, episode. He refers to himself as the Flash. Well, did he or he almost did? I I thought they were like in the lobby of the police station, and somebody else was referring to the blur, and he said, "No, I was thinking the Flash." Well, he, but he, he, yes, that's true. You're, you're, you're exactly right. It was in the police station. He was talking to Detective West, but he started to say Flash, and he didn't quite say it oh. all the way because he was interrupted for something in the background. But yeah, yeah. Um, but so obviously that's coming, uh, which is good because I'm getting sick of. I mean, I, th- I think they started calling the streak at first, and right. then the blurs come up, which oh, is right. you know, that's yeah. all fine. I, I like, I like the aspect that they're, you know, the the public is trying to come up with a name for this guy. 
Um, but I, I'm, I'm anxious for him to just, you know, for everybody to know him as The Flash, uh, which is curious because the show is called The Flash, and <laughs> the main character isn't referred to by his name uh, by other characters, so uh, which is interesting. So you have Detective West, who is, like I said, the father figure of Barry, because, because oh, and, uh, you know, how cool is this that we get, uh, oh, gosh, um, John Wesley Ship, right? Mm-hmm. The guy who played the original Flash in the 1989-1990 TV series, playing Barry's actual father in the show, who's in prison right now. It's, it's a nice little homage to what you know what came before, but but you have Detective West who who basically raised Barry, uh, along with with daughter Iris. And okay, can we can we talk just briefly about this? How weird is this? this crush that Barry has on Iris, considering that they grew up together, that they're basically brother and sister, and yet he has this immense crush on her. That's just, you. You think? You don't, you, that doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't. I mean, it's not like they grew up as infants. I mean, they have some semblance of he has his family, she has her family. Yeah, he's raised there, but I don't know. It doesn't bother me. It it just seems really weird to me. It doesn't bother me. So I I I you know Barry uh, Allen and Iris West are supposed to be you know the couple from the comics you know Silver Age on. You know I don't care if they don't put them together in the show. I kind of hope they don't because of that uh, that whole sisterly thing. It's just I mean because because Iris thinks of him as her brother. I mean she's talked about it on the show a few times. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just weird. Um, but speaking of, of uh, relationships in the show, which I thought this happened rather soon uh, in, in the development of the show, but uh, then again, you know, it's a new show, so it could have been canceled any time. Of course, we, we now know that it's been picked up for a full season, uh, but, but uh, at least you know, in four episodes, Iris went from having no romantic entanglements at all to having, uh, who, uh, at, into having... Uh, a boyfriend who happens to be Detective West's um, partner, whose name, who his name is, uh, uh, his last name's Thon. I don't remember what they call his, what, what his first name is. So Thon in the comics is the Reverse Flash, right? I I think so. Because I, I get confused on this um, because, like you, I'm not a big Flash reader. I never mm -hmm. was. Uh, so I know. So we have Professor Zoom, the Reverse Flash. That's the character I know. But I also, and that I think his name was Eobard Thon. I want to say. Okay. I also know that in later years they came up came out with a new character called Hunter Zolomon, who I think is is referred to as just Zoom. And and that's so you have the Reverse Flash. So does that mean that Detective Thon eventually becomes? An enemy of Barry's, and and considering that in 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 the Bronze Age, uh, or later, my probably was later, uh, the Reverse Flash ends up killing Iris West, or supposedly killing Iris West. Uh, from Barry's mm -hmm. perspective, she's dead. She of course went to the thirty thirtieth century. Anyway, that's that's a whole convoluted story. We don't need to get into. Um, <laughs> the guarantee but, but the, will not be this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the Reverse Flash is, is responsible for, for Iris' death, and, and he is an enemy of the Flash. So I can see that whole situation happening. You know, something happens to Iris or whatever, and Thawn goes you know, nuts or I don't know. Anyway, something happens to him, and he becomes the Reverse Flash. However, we have... Travis is shaking his head. Um, we have the added element of Dr. Harrison Wells, played by Tom Cavanaugh, which I, the reverse flash. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so given what we know about Professor Wells and his apparent knowledge of the future, you know, because we have that that huge revelation at the end of the first episode where he not only gets up out of his wheelchair, so he's mm -hmm. not the he's not the his the, secret room. And his, yeah, yeah, he goes into his secret room. Yeah, so he's, he's not, lying to everybody about his condition. Gets up, walks into the secret room, and we see this. Uh, I don't know if it was a newspaper or newspaper headline from the future. Yeah, basically talking about the Flash dying. Was it dying or 
Oh, I remember now. I should have looked yeah. this up. Yeah, I don't remember but what but it was. Ha- there's a reference to the crisis. I mean, they talked about the red skies. Uh, I think I think it was Flash dies in the crisis. I, it's something along those lines. Mm-hmm. But you know, you have that huge. Re- but anyway, so so yeah, is Wells the Reverse Flash or is he Zoom? You know, because Wells is always talking about. I mean, uh, he's talking about to to you know Barry's friend, like Detective West, uh, when Wells killed. Um, uh, God, the, the the one guy the that Multiplex was after. Right, the corporate scientist guy. Yeah. But but he's the guy that is involved with Metamorpho. Uh, God, I can't mm-hmm. remember his name. That character's name. Anyway, when he kills him, he talks about protecting Barry. And so Wells, to me, he 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 looks more to me like he is the Zoom character because he's trying to make Barry become the hero that he needs to be. And that's a huge thing, a huge part of who Zoom is in the comics that I read. So I read, like, Flash Rebirth. Um, I'm pretty sure that was Hunter Zolomon in that one. I could be totally wrong. <laughs> Maybe it is the reverse Flash. Maybe it's Thon. I don't remember now. Well, see, that's but see that for me, this is what gets into the I'm not sure what they're throwing out name-wise and stuff. What's just... Them just them just mining names from the DC universe and those characters versus how do they actually attach to the reality of who the characters are? You know, it's kind of a landmine of because I don't think the detective whatsoever is going to be the Reverse Flash. I just don't see that. I don't see that. I think I still think that the this other you know scientist guy is the Reverse Flash. I think he's the guy that you know basically pulped. Um, mom at the beginning of the show. Who, which my, one? Wells? Theory. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think so too. But you think that's Zoom and not the Reverse Flash? I, you know, uh, maybe there, maybe there's no difference in this universe. I just, I, I know that there are two characters who are who are basically the Reverse Flash in the comics, and so I'm trying to figure out, and, and they both have different motivations. Right. Um, like I said, Hunter Solomon, I think, is the guy who who is trying to motivate Barry to become a better hero by going off and killing all these other people, or mm-hmm. or or just murdering people to get Barry to to do something. So I, I don't know. I e- either way, I I'd be interested um, to see. Uh, I think like you, what's going on with this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Trying to figure out exactly what that's going to end up being like. So, uh, okay. Um, let's see. I think uh, is that it. Do wanna, is that all we want to say about the Flash? We talked a bit a long time about the Flash, but but it's it's the new it's the new thing. It's the new one of the right. new TV shows. So right. it, it deserves a bit of attention. And we've had, like I said, we've had four episodes out that I've seen. Uh, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, I like you. You mentioned the the actor that plays Flash. His name is Grant uh, Gustin, I think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I th- I think he's he's really good. I think the cast in general is okay for the most part. Uh, I I just really like the tone of it. Uh, after coming off of Arrow, that first season of Arrow, and it was you know, just the melodrama was just, I mean it was so so thick that I I could barely watch it. Oh, um, but it's it's the same with the it's the same with um with the Flash. It's just a different tone, but it's the same. No, sort of thing. no, oh, come no. On. Every no. damn show, every damn show. Oh, you're not my dad, but you are my dad. Weep, weep, okay. Weep. Oh, my dead parents. Oh, my dad's in prison. Weep, weep, weep. Oh, I'm pining for Iris, but I can't have Iris. Weep, weep, weep. It's the same stuff. It's just you're right. a different tone of delivery. But it's the you're same right. CW stuff. It's the one thing, one complaint I have about both shows is it being on the CW, it's going to have a certain tone, and they both have it. They both have this, you know, God, dye your hair black. Pay, put white face paint on, dark eyeliner, and, and just be emo. Let's just get it over with, <laughs> you know, to the full, to the full extent. I mean, it's just because they're both they're both that. I mean, and you just have to kind of accept. That's why I was joking earlier about the piano music. You know, you know, you can you start uh, to hear the tinkle of piano music, and you know it's going to be some kind of quasi weepy moment. You know, uh, getting off of comic book shows, the supernatural that's been running for ten years does the same thing. It's the exact same formula on the CW. All three shows. They're 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 completely the same, you know. They have the, the the same, you know. You could almost guarantee exactly where the the points of the kind of melodramatic stuff is going to happen in every single show. So you're right. You know, you're right. You're, you're right. There is melodrama so in if, here. If I wanted just... to point, if I wanted to point at them as being quality television, 
neither one of them are <laughs> as far as no. being oh boy but as far as the flash being a fun superhero show that you just watch it and you kind of enjoy it you laugh and you smile through it regardless of the drama that's there it certainly is i for me it is anyway it's definitely a bright shiny everything about it is shiny it's always in the almost always in the daylight it's well lit which is completely the opposite of of the arrow for sure mm-hmm Mm-hmm. The, arrow, the arrow falls into more Batman category as far as it's always darkly lit and dreary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, I just, I just, I guess I respond better to the 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 light heartedness or or the the lighter quality of uh, the Flash as opposed to Arrow. Mm. My limited exposure to Arrow. <laughs> right. uh, so let, let's talk about Arrow then. Well, I guess let, let's let you talk about Arrow then. <laughs> like I said, I, I only watched a, a few episodes of the first season. I have been keeping up on it. There's a podcast I listen to, uh, the Pizza Party podcast. Uh, it's a spinoff of the um, the Fight for Comics podcast that these guys out of Utah do. And uh, they've been talking about Arrow since day one. And I, I, I would normally uh, kind of skip over any talk about any TV shows that they do, but I've just decided that I don't care that much anymore about, about being spoiled so much about TV shows because it's really, it's really difficult. Uh, There's too much uh, multimedia out there talking yeah, about it. Yeah, and, unless, unless I just divorce myself from, from Twitter in the evenings, it's, it's basically hard to, to not be spoiled. Yeah, so anyway, so I, I listen to this podcast with these guys, uh, which I, I enjoy this podcast a lot. So I feel like I have kept up with Arrow, even though I haven't watched an episode since the first season. <laughs> so how biased are these guys? Because that, that... No, they love the show. They absolutely love it. They think it's one of the best shows on TV. Uh, if, if you're a comic book fan. Okay, I don't know that I would... I don't know if I'd say that. <laughs> not, not, I, know, I doubt they, they think it's like, you know... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good quality show that I've watched recently. <laughs> well, sure. I, I understand what you're saying. So, I re- I'm enjoying Arrow. I mean, I, certainly the first season of Arrow, the first show, I was, you know, I was, you know, WTF as Ollie is snapping people's necks in the first, like, 10 minutes of the show. He's literally breaking people's necks, getting a hold of them and killing them dead. And I'm thinking, this, this there's no way that this can be, you know, Oliver Queen and it just so far out there and whatnot. And certainly the first season, you know, he... You know, he puts arrows through people like nobody's business. You know, like I said, dramatic stuff happens, and then you get into the second season where he's decided that he needs to be a better person than that, he needs to be a better hero, that that's not the answer. Bring people to justice is what he does. You know, gathers as much information as he can and captures them and basically turns them over to the police. Second season, of course, has lots of drama in it too because he had all the Deathstroke stuff happening, which I actually really enjoyed. I like the, Death, the Deathstroke stuff. Yeah, there's some over-the-top... Uh, angsty, you know, drama there because there's a dead girl between the Arrow and, and Deathstroke, so that creates all that extra stuff that <laughs> that that is in a CW show. And um, the third season, now we're in the third season, it's moved even more into being the superhero. I think you know, standard superhero show. Um, he you know, continues to fight with the drawn line as to the fact he's not going to kill people. The current plot that's going on, some of his best friends have been killed, and other people within his party want him to, you know, put people down that they think are bad guys, and he refuses to do that. To the to the degree that he actually um, has told the League of Assassins that as long as this guy, you know, um, Merlin, is in town, He's actually protecting this guy that at one point he wanted to kill. I mean, he thought he killed him at one point, but now he's basically told the League of Assassin, as long as he's in Starling City, you, you, you know, I'm going to defend him. I'll fight you guys, which is crazy because, of course, the League of Assassins we know are over the top as far as yeah. <laughs> how brutal they are and whatnot. So let, let me ask you a couple questions. So uh, League of, the League of Assassins, do they have... I, so I've heard that, that Ra's al Ghul is... Has last, or will make an appearance. Last last, uh, last episode, he is at the very end. So is he associated with the League of Shadow or League of yes, Assassins? Yes, he is. Okay. He is the dragon. He is the, the head of it. Um, his daughter. He has a daughter 
um, Talia, and um, yeah, and she is the in the TV show, the original, and I say original because I'm assuming there's going to be a new Black Canary where there's a character moving towards being Black Canary. She right. is she is the lover of the original Black Canary who is not around anymore. Spoiler, sorry. Wait, but, wait, um, wait, 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 back up, back up. Mm-hmm. Who, who's the lover of the original Black Canary? Um, Rasha Gul's daughter. They are a couple. So I'm sorry. Who, who's the couple? I, I still miss that. <laughs> so, um, not Diana Lance, Laurel, Laurel Lance, Laurel Lance, Laurel. No, it's Dan. I don't remember which Lance it is. I get the two. I get their names <laughs> because it's one of those things. It's one are of those things. Just, where, they're sisters, yeah, right? They're sisters, and and Oliver has had relations with both of them. Wait, wait. So uh, yeah, I remember this from the first season. So one of the one of the sisters di- supposedly died in the boating accident that and he was involved in. Right. And she's the original Black Canary. She didn't okay. die either. She's around. She starts up again in season two, and is um around a lot in season two. In his past, and they do all the flashback stuff, and, mm-hmm. and current time. She she ends up at some point in her life being picked up by the, the League of Assassins, and they train her, and she's the Black ah. Canary. She, she goes by the Black Canary, or the Canary is what I think is what she goes by. And um, that's Because, where because we have no room for colors in the Arrow universe. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. So, Go on, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so yes, her and... and, and you know, Talia have a relationship. I mean, they're... Oh, okay. I, they are okay. a couple. I wasn't they sure if you were talking about Rachel Ghul and no, 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 Black no. Canary having no. a relationship. Okay. No, actually, Rachel Ghul hates Black Canary. She, oh. He refers to... Because, at, the end of, at, the end of the last, at the end of the last episode, he basically... Refer, he goes, that, that's fine that she's dead because she was never really one of us anyway. I mean, and there's some suspect that it has been implied that Rachel Ghul actually had her killed because she gets killed by, by a bunch of arrows. She gets... Pincushioned by a bunch of arrows, and so it's right. a debate: Is it Merlin that did it? Is it you know Rasha Kula did it? Was it Oliver that did it? And there are um, uh, commercials have been out: Is it Roy that did it? So who knows? That's that's going to be the that's the running seems to be the running plot this season. Is you know who killed Sarah? It's Sarah. Yeah, it's Sarah. Who killed Sarah? Is the running plot through this season? I mean, uh, while other stuff is happening, that's kind of where the, they're going. Is they're trying to figure out, they're trying to be detectives and trying to figure out what's going on. Also, this season they introduced um, Ray Palmer, who is an absolute douchebag. I can't stand <laughs> him. And, that, and he's, being, he's being played by um, Superman, the guy from the Superman films, right? Brandon yeah. Routh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which he does a fine job. But I mean, this 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 Ray Palmer is really rich. He's 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 taking over. Um, Sterling City. He wants to rename it Star City. Oh, good. They're they're getting, actually getting back to that. Yeah, yeah. He, he wants good. to rename it. He wants to rename it. He's bought out Queen Consolidated. He owns Queen Consolidated. He, you know, is there in Queen Tower. He's taken their tech. He's improved on it because he's so much better. He um, continuously pursues Felicity Smoke because she's like this cyber, you know, this computer genius to work for. So she's now working for him. But also doing the stuff with the arrow stuff. Well, she has wow. to have a job. She has to have a job. She has to pay her bills, because Oliver doesn't have any money. Um, oh, so, they, so they've stripped him of all his money. Yeah. Yeah. He tried getting his company back, and Palmer basically outbid him and out out schmoozed the board holders, and so he's now in control of all of that. But I don't know. I just don't. I don't care for the character. I just kind of punch him. <laughs> uh, well, the one that we'll ever see him as the Adam, I have no idea. Well, now, okay, I'm glad you mentioned that because I read something just recently where Ralph apparently supposedly said that he would be donning some sort of Adam costume. What, cool. what that really means, I don't know. I mean, cool. I like the Adam. I mean, I like the superhero, the Adam. I just don't know if I like this guy. This guy has the potential to be... I mean, he's a nice guy. He comes across as a nice guy, but at the same time, he knows he's a real big genius and just kind of too full of himself. And I just kind of, it's just it, it's just the type of person he has that makes me want to slap him. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that that's really, you know, a fault of the character or whatever. That's just my personal take on the dude. But um, I, I, it's a fun it's a fun show. You know, they've had 
they've had the Flash show up a little bit, you know, briefly. Was it in that show? You know, just the, the whole, you know, to continue to spurn the whole let's be superheroes kind of thing. But, um, you know, and Felicity obviously has been in the Flash show also. Yeah, okay. I, we forgot to talk about Felicity uh, involved in that because, yeah, she showed up in one episode to basically say hi to Barry, I guess. And I and well, I and I, re- I realized that when he, when the the Flash character when Barry I don't know why I say the Flash when Barry showed up in the backdoor pilot uh, for the Flash show in Arrow, uh-huh. I guess because I, obviously I never watched it, but I heard that there was a a, a an attraction between Felicity yeah. and Barry, yeah. and 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 then they played up on that in that episode of the Flash, uh-huh. um, and well, then we- basically. I guess kind of shut the door on that uh, to to some degree. Uh, I I think yeah, it's really shut. But um, but yeah, I mean when when Mary Lyon shows up in the in the Arrow show, you know he's there. Just I mean I, obviously they're sneaking the character in to start that whole process for the for his own show. But yeah, they, there's some there's some uh, there's definitely some traction there. They're both you know like minded the same sort of thing. You know at the time. At the time, Oliver was a different... I mean, clearly Felicity likes Oliver, but he was a, a different kind of unattainable than he is now. And and so, yeah, there was stuff there. She actually disappeared for a few shows because she spent... After Barry gets hit with a lightning and whatnot, she's actually by his bedside for a long time while he's in the hospital, I guess. I mean, I, that's they, they have that in the plot and whatnot. So she's there, and she has an interest in the guy, and that's why she shows up in the Flash show then. But... Um, I love Felicity. Felicity is one of my favorite characters in the show. She's awesome. I, I can watch a show of just Felicity. She's just she's fun. They they play around with the relationship between her and Oliver. They potentially go on a date. It doesn't necessarily work out. Um, it's all part of the probably the drama that you don't care for. In that Oliver doesn't really <laughs> feel like you know he wants all this other stuff. But how do you have all that other stuff and be the arrow? I mean, the arrow is kind of all consuming and. Um, Every time he's near somebody, of course, they're killed or threatened or whatever. And so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of those things. He's at a dinner. He's at a date. He's having a dinner date with her, and there's an attack on the place they're in, and he decides, you know, this just of doesn't. Of course. This just doesn't work. Which, of course, yeah, no, like you said, you're not like I actually, I kind of liked it. I mean, I, I think they do a good job of the two of them acting that tension between the two of them. You know, they do a good job of. Because relationships come up an awful lot in the show, which may be too much. Anytime there's talk about that, she always kind of has, she does a very good job of kind of seeming uncomfortable and cutting it off. I like her as an actress, the way she delivers her lines and 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 the emotions around that. So I like the show. I think it's a fun show. So one of the things that I, I've, I've taken away from the, the, the podcast discussion um, that I mentioned earlier Mm-hmm. And also, if 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 you learn nothing else from Tumblr, it's this: that everyone wants Felicity and and uh, Ollie to get together, and and uh, Felicity Smoke is an awesome, awesome girl. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not I'm not making an argument for anything about that. I just I, that I, that's all I know of 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 Arrow for the most part. He killed a lot of people in the first season. Uh, the show got better. And Felicity and he should get together. That's pretty much the takeaway I have of Arrow right now. Plus, as you were talking there, Travis, describing uh, the situation with Arrow, you remember when uh, I think this is this this has been played upon in the comics a little bit, uh, also in the Batman Brave and the Bold animated series when uh, Green Arrow would show up. There was one point in in one episode where Batman says something to... No, no, I'm thinking of a comic. Batman basically turns to Ollie and says, is there, is, is there nothing where you don't copy me? Right, you know, because the Arrow... Uh, arrow, uh, sure. arrow mobile, the Arrow car, Cave, car, right, right, Trick right. Arrows, you know, all that stuff, right? A sidekick. It really seems to me, like I said, when you were talking there, describing the, the show, it seems to me like this is, this is CW's Batman without Batman. Everything seems to be Batman-esque. It's just... They they're calling it arrow, <laughs> and he, and he and he shoots arrows instead of instead of uh, throwing batarangs. Mm-hmm. It, it's, 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 it's bizarre. Certainly, 
certainly to a degree, it's definitely that it's definitely that way. I mean, I, that's why I mentioned you know, the the comparison. You know, Flash is this bright, cheery, and the Arrow is the you know, the kind of Gotham esque kind of thing, and it really is because it's almost almost all the action happens at night, and you know, yeah, oh yeah, it, it definitely you know follows a lot of that. There's some other cool stuff out though. They they play around with Argus quite a bit. Amanda Waller's shown up multiple times. You know, they've obviously flirted with the Suicide Squad in in the um in in the show in the past. You know, now they're not killing people. You can have reoccurring villains and stuff. So, you know, Deadshot has shown up a few times. I like it. It's different than it's different than the Flash. You know, it's definitely moodier as far as it being a dark and brooding as far as that goes, as opposed to Tyrion brooding. I, I like it. Like I said, I, it's it it feels like it's developed. The show has developed. It actually feels like it's going somewhere, you know, season to season, as far as the development of a superhero and that sort of thing. Like I said, the first season clearly the guy is, you know, a, a killer. You know, he clearly is a killer in the first season. You know, and there's consequences that come out of all of that. You know, that lead him to decide that doesn't what he wants to be. The second season is a, a battle with his past, largely. I mean, he's dealing with the consequences of of Slade of Deathstroke. You know, their interaction with each other created a huge mess that finally comes to a header in season two. That's what largely season two is. Season three seems to be he cemented himself even more into the superhero mode. You know, they go on patrols. They, you know, he's got a few more trick arrows that he uses throughout the show and whatnot. He has a sidekick that, you know, that that he does use to some degree. It, it's moving more and more to the standard superhero type trope as far as that goes. And I, I, I like it. Is it super television? No. <laughs> you know, but I like it. Yeah, so based on what I know of the show from from listening to other people talk about it, mm-hmm. I know you I know you like it. I, I know, you know I've teased you about the, the quality of the show in the past, sure. but sure. all in good fun though. I've decided, and I, I'm recording the current season right now, so what I've decided to do is go back and pick up where I left off in the first season and try to get caught up as soon as possible. Although, considering how many new TV shows I'm watching that are comic book based, there are, there are four of them right now. And soon to be uh, more. Here. Yeah, and soon to be more. I don't know how I'm going to do this, so... Uh, but, but I plan to... To, to pick up on Arrow again and and uh, discover for myself what you and others have been saying about the show. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Uh, cool. I just got to get. I think I just got to get through that first season, right? Yeah, no, the first <laughs> season. The first season's tough. I mean, I, I sat around and watched it mostly because it's a Green Arrow knockoff, and I'm a Green Arrow fan. So right, exactly. Right. right. Okay, so let's let's move on. Uh, we talked about how Arrow is essentially Batman without Batman, but let's talk about a show. Uh, that's about Batman without Batman, right? Uh, and that's that's uh, the uh, the show on Fox, Gotham. Mm. Uh, I've actually, Travis, I have recorded all of the episodes. I've only watched two. Mm. Are you are you watching that show regularly? Yes, I, yes, I am. Are you all caught up on it? Yes, yes, I am. Okay. All right. So you you'll you'll be doing a lot of the talking then. <laughs> when when this was first announced, I think you and I talked about this on a previous episode. Probably on, of the podcast, and so we were talking about specifically about you know Batman can't show up. We we I think we agreed that we didn't want a whole lot of Bruce Wayne in it. That you know him as as a child in it. Well, I remember there being some conflict of yeah they said that Bruce Wayne was going to be there, but we weren't sure how that was going to work out. You know I mean. Oh, at that time you're right. Yeah, but now obviously we know. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, so that was our reaction to it at first. So now that we've seen. I've seen a few. You've seen how many episodes are out now? I don't remember. I want to say I want to say eight or nine. That's Is the number. That that's I don't know. I maybe maybe less. I should look this up. Uh, I'll do that as you're talking. Um, <laughs> uh, so when I wasn't all that enthusiastic about the show, and then when it premiered and I hadn't watched it yet, I was listening to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I listened to a lot of podcasts, a lot of comic book based podcast and of course people are talking about the show just like we are now mm-hmm. and so uh, the reaction either went one of two ways either it's it's pretty good considering or 
burn it down. It's it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Or 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 I you know a variation of that is there are some things they like about it and other things are just totally totally crappy. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bruce, so Bru- uh, Bruce Wayne's character being one of those things. Fish Mooney, which when I heard uh, that Jada Pinkett Smith was going to be on the show, I almost didn't watch the show based on that alone, because I do not like that actress. I, I cannot stand her, her style of acting. But you know what? I actually enjoy her character on the show because her uh, Pinkett style fits with that that over dramatic mm-hmm. quality that Fish Mooney brings to the show. Mm-hmm. And well, I'll get to that in a minute. I was going to say something about uh, you know feeling for the character, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So okay, so that that's just kind of my my going into the show. That's how I I was feeling about it. So now that I have watched two episodes, it's not that bad. Considering, I mean, there's a lot of problems with it. Uh, you know. Like I said, I've only watched two episodes, so you'll have to speak about what's come after that. But you know, the the the, the guy who plays Gordon is likable enough. Um, Bullock is awesome. He, even you know, he he falls into the you know the the over dramatic character a bit too, mm-hmm. to some degree. But he brings a certain humor to the show, right? And his interaction with Gordon that makes it worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bruce Wayne is just, you know, he's just there. I, you know, I, I appreciate the the brief examinations that they have of his character, trying to better himself and test himself, because he clearly has a mission in mind. Whether it, 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 right now it may just be to find out who who killed his parents. Um, I think, and maybe I'm just bring, you know, I'm bringing a lot of baggage to this show, right? Uh, based based on the comics and whatnot, the history I have with the character. But I, I see, I I think that he's thinking even beyond that, or at least starting to, and that's okay. Alfred is an interesting take on the character. It's more like the the depiction of the character that we saw in the Batman Earth One graphic novel by Jeff Johns. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, and some oh and and also kind of the, the the way that the character was portrayed in Beware the Batman that 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 last animated animated series that was quickly canceled on the Cartoon Network, right? But this Alfred is really brusque. I mean, he's well, it's interesting. In the first ep- in the, in the, in the, in the um, pilot, he's I mean, I'm like, whoa. I mean, he just kind of shows up. You know, Bruce has just seen his parents murdered. He basically picks the kid up by his scuffs and go, you know, and goes, "We're walking out of here. Stand proud." Blah blah blah. And I'm thinking, "Whoa, where's compassionate Alfred at? This is crap." I like compassion. <laughs> I mean, I like Alfred who can kick ass, but I also like Alfred who is this kind of compassionate, you know, the equivalent of father, you know, great guy. And and I'm like, uh, I'm a, I'm instantly not liking this dude. I this, my first thought was I watched that first part and they first show Alfred. I'm thinking. I don't like this show because I don't like Alfred. Alfred's a dick in this, you know. But he's changed. <laughs> he's not that way now. I mean, they yeah. since they've shown more and more of him, he is clearly concerned. You're getting much more of the compassionate end of the guy as opposed to that first introduction to him, though, the first exposure. It's like this guy oh, is it, hard, it was off-putting. Hard, hard-boiled asshole. Like, I was like thinking, dude, the guy just, you know, the kid just saw his parents both get executed and bleed out on the in the alley while he's standing there. What are you doing? But you're yeah, still a Wayne. You're you're still a Wayne, Master Wayne. Yeah, and I'm thinking, oh, that's horrible. So, but yeah, I'm glad they've kind of feels to me like since the pilot they've they've righted that ship because that was going to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I was going to be able to tolerate it if if they're going to keep showing Bruce Wayne and have Alfred be that way. I was going to be. Uh, so, what do you think of um, the 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 Batman villains to be? So we've we've been introduced to the Riddler so far. Uh, we've been introduced to the, the Cop- penguin. Uh, is there anybody else? Falcone, obviously. Falcone. Oh, Falcone. So, yeah, okay. So right now in in Batman Eternal, Falcone, at least in the you know the first part of that that comic, you know he's he's played a, a significant role in the story, and and of course he he was a big character in the Batman Year One by Frank Miller. Mm-hmm. And, and in my mind, Falcone has been you know. A typical Gotham mobster character. What you know, take that as you will. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little over the top, but you know, it's Gotham. Ooh, right. Come back to that. This is Gotham. That phrase. Uh, okay. Um, 
But I really like, I don't know who the actor is, I've seen him on other things, but I really like the actor's portrayal of Falcone in Gotham. I think that's a really interesting take on the character and adds a, a, a dimension to Gotham, Gotham City that is really interesting, you know, because there, there was that, I think it was the second episode, where he and Fish Mooney get together to talk business and he, I think it was that first, maybe, I don't know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which episode it was, <laughs> but, but um, he's talking to, I think it's Fish Mooney, it may be somebody else, but he's talking about how there was a balance in Gotham City between the Falcone family and the Waynes, and now that the Waynes have been, I'm going to say it, Travis, whacked and stacked, <laughs> uh, that balance is, is, is off. And he thinks that, that the balance needs to be there, which I, I just I just find it find interesting. So anyway, uh, just a little character moment for this this guy that really drew me in, uh, more so than say some of the other more well known. Oh, Catwoman! I mean, Cat, right? There, that's Cat. Yeah, that cat that character's there too. Uh, then then these other you know the typical Batman villains like like uh, the Penguin and and uh, and the Riddler. Mm -hmm. So I, I I just really like that. I, I understand based on a little bit that I've I've heard that Penguin is going to be making his presence or has made his presence known in the latest episode, even though everybody thinks he's dead. Um, yeah, and, kind of. yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, um, kind of. <laughs> but but he's he's setting himself up to basically take over, I guess. Or I, I I'm not sure of that. You'll have to expand on that. Uh, the Riddler is just kooky. Uh, the guy who's playing him is really playing up that whole psychotic uh, serial killer esque angle of the Riddler. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's bizarre. The fact that and the fact that he's he works at the police department is an interesting take. But it's just like why why would they employ such a guy? But but again, this is Gotham. Gotham, right? <laughs> I swear to God, Travis. That excuses two, everything, doesn't it? No, two episodes in, and I'm already sick of hearing people say this. But this is Gotham, Jim. Why aren't you beating up people and 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 breaking the law? Uh, and you know, blah blah blah. Just because this is Gotham. This is how things are. And I realize that this happens in the comics too. I mean, that's that's a line that gets thrown in there as well. But it's uh -huh. just I don't know. It it seems so concentrated. In, in the first two episodes of this show, it's like, oh my god, yes, I get it. It's Gotham. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very in your face. It's very in your face, even more so. Whereas in the comics, it's almost, it's almost as like an inside joke amongst like against the crime fighters, whether that be the police or be the superheroes. You know, it's kind of like it's almost like a, it's like a bad joke. It's like this, all this stuff happens because it's Gotham. You know, kind of, it's kind of like. Mm -hmm. It, it's a it's a thing you say because you're frustrated, whereas in the show it's a thing you say as like uh, I don't know what I'm not sure exactly how I'm supposed to take it in in the TV in the TV show, but but yeah it gets delivered way way too often, mm -hmm. um, and there are aspects of the show I really like I you know I know some people don't like the ambience I kind of like the ambience it, to me it's it's weird because it's like some things are delivered in kind of a in an almost comic book camp kind of a, a, a delivery to it. Yeah. And and then some of it flirts with being trying to be a regular like detective TV show or kind of thing. And and I don't think the mix works. There's sometimes no. there's, this, this, there's this abrupt clash there. I think that's probably the thing I would want to criticize most about the show is that there's just this kind of thing that happens. I mean I like and it's not that I don't like both aspects. I like both aspects but they're not working together. They're need, they they need to, to do one or do the other, and and because I feel like it it's very disjointed, you know. Otherwise, you know, examples of that are like when the when they have like a TV reporter. They have this one character, you know, character that keeps reoccurring. That's a TV character. Oh no, I mean that's that's a newscaster that's on the scene, and the way she delivers her, it's very. It's very campy. It's it to me it almost feels tongue in cheek, like they're like it's an expose kind of. I don't know. There's something about it. It has this feel that matches some of the other stuff in it. Um, I don't know if you saw the episode with with people collecting people for the doll maker. Yes, I did see that one. Okay, so those two 
bad guys, villains, whatever you want to call them, they both seemed weird, didn't they? I mean, not weird as in they're bad guys, but weird as in the way they delivered their lines. They were very, like, out of... Like, yeah, stilted of, and, yeah, they're, yeah but, they're, they're odd people. And, and I don't... And that's not the actors, because both the actors that played those people are good actors. Clearly, that's how they were supposed to be portraying those, portraying those people. So they have that almost comic book kind of bad guy quality to them, and then you have other people walking around that are very smooth, very polished, and very more the detective. Barbara Gordon is more of the, she's the detective's wife from the detective TV show versus the comic book character, and so there's just these kind of clashes as far as it being a a good TV show as far as that goes that, to me, kind of crash into each other, and I don't, that's a problem I have with it as far as that goes. But I like, like I said, I like both aspects for what they are, but they don't, to me, they don't, they don't work together. Currently, I want to, like, punch Barbara Gordon in the gut a whole bunch. <laughs> she has made some choices that I'm just like, how would you ever think that that was okay? Are, are, you, talking about, are you talking about, so I saw in one episode, uh, she, Gordon is talking about how he wishes he could do something, he could uh, put the press on, oh, it, was, it was the Dollmaker one, the, the kids. Not even that, no, she does something far worse than that. Oh, like, okay. So, the last but, but, episode, she does some pretty dumbass stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I I, I, I kind of like the fact. I mean, it was stupid, obviously, for her the way that that happened. But um, yeah, well, I guess in a sense, I mean, but uh, but how she, you know, Gordon's like, well, I can't, you know, I I, I can't call, I can't call the press and tell them about this, you know, because it'll get me in trouble at my job. And she just picks up the phone and does it, you know, because she's a citizen. She right. has this information and she calls it in. I don't mind I, that. I like I that. Don't mind, I don't mind that. It gives you a reason as to why, other than her being beautiful, why is Gordon in a relationship with her? I mean, it shows that she has some, other than she's hiding some stuff clearly because nobody tells their elder past to whoever. I mean, but I, I think it establishes that she's a good person and wants to be good, and that's why she's with Gordon because Gordon's a good person who wants to do good. Great. But she just does some dumb stuff that I'm just like, are you kidding me? Anyway, but so what you... the, the greatest character in the whole show is the penguin. Cobblepot is, is over the top. And absolutely awesome. I mean, yeah, he's scary because he's this 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 penguin has no issues with you know killing you for a sandwich, you know, which makes him way more frightening than most of the time the penguins build. I mean, there's some stories where they build a penguin as being brutal, and there's other stories where the penguin's this kind of tubby guy that has all this bird crap, and he goes wah, 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 and you think he's kind of dumb. <laughs> but the penguin can be a really cool character. I like the penguin in this. I like the betrayal, the, the character. You got to get caught up because the penguin is either crazy and doesn't realize exactly how how tight of a tightrope he is walking or he is absolutely brilliant and he is going to you know he is setting up to jerk everyone's chain ultimately down the road and become clearly the penguin the crime boss that that he is in the comics i don't know it just to me is like this hmm. this, this latest episode the end of it, it was like, whoa. Okay, well, uh, that gives me a motivation. Um, but this is here, here's the reason I haven't watched more than a few episodes. I guess maybe I've watched three. I don't know. I, I'm thinking that uh, I've watched more than two because I, th I thought the Dollmaker was the third episode, but I I I don't remember. Um, what was I gonna say? Why haven't you watched them? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Because this is one of those shows where I'm watching with somebody else in the house, and so it's just finding time to sit down with yeah. with with them and 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 watch the show. But yeah, I it's 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 funny how you talk about the 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 uh, the two seemingly incompatible tones of the show, and it, it reminds me like it's it, it almost like the show is trying to be Nolan's Batman universe meshed with. Um, oh God! Who's the director of those last few Batman films before Nolan? Shoot, Schumach Schumacher. Sure. Yeah, right? like like that over the top campy quality that Schumacher brought to those films, and mesh mm -hmm. it with with Nolan's Batman, and it doesn't quite work. Right. But but again, just like the Flash, you know, this is this is a new show. This is the first few episodes. Well, for me, first few episodes. They're still developing that universe. They're still developing those characters. Well, I think you need to go – the biggest mistake, I think, is, I mean, for me, when the first show hit, there was people who loved it. 
think it's great. And there's people, like I said, that I never, I didn't hear anybody that was in between. It was either you loved it or it was the worst piece of shit that was ever put out, and it should be burnt down, and everybody on it should be killed, and you know should never touch anything. You, uh, to me, you got to go in with the with the kind of this is a whole new reality. You, yes, you know the names of people. You got a sense of kind of what's there, but just they're obviously playing to some to some degree fast and loose with with the whole you know early bat mythos. It's not going to be Gotham Central. You know there were people who were like you're up in arms because it's not Gotham Central. Clearly, it was never meant to be Gotham Central either. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, that would be a cool show. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I love those books. That would be awesome to see that, but. I think it was pretty clear early on that that's not what it was going to be, and just kind of, you know, go with the flow. I mean, things have different influences. Clearly, if you look at this versus what we all think is the Batman timeline, which in the New 52 is kind of weird anyway, but the stuff doesn't match up, right? I mean, is, so if Bruce is a teenager, is that how old he is? He I don't know. I, I, I was thinking about that I mean, too. I he he seems like um, he, he's, he's, he's not ten, so he's probably 13 twelve, thirteen. That's kind of how I take it. So okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. So and and you got to figure like the, the the you know Falcone is how old? You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know he's he's in his fifties at least. At least. You know, yeah. and you got the penguin. Maybe the penguin's a young man. Maybe he's in his early twenties. That still makes mm -hmm. him. That still makes him 10, 15 years older than Batman. So if you start playing that time and the Riddler, you start playing that timeline out. By the time Batman's in his prime and being Batman, these guys are old geezers. So you know, obviously that clearly doesn't work. They're trying to tell a different story. They they right. don't care what the history of the Batman used to be. They're they're paying homage to it in some sense. You know, by by trying to create an ambiance and whatnot. But they're clearly interested in telling their own tales, spinning their own whatever, and um, I think we should just look at it as that and not try to pigeonhole it into the Batman universe and think it's got to fit this mold because it's not going to. It, by the premise of it initially set up, it's not going to because c clearly Bruce and um, and um, Gordon have interaction on the day that that um, that um, Bruce Wayne's parents are murdered. You know, that's pretty well established throughout comics, right? That, but they don't have a lot of interaction, to the best of our knowledge, after that. It's not like they continue to bump into each other. Almost every episode of this show, he shows up at Bruce's place to kind of give him a, you know, whatever. He, he feels some... He, he has a greater connection to the, to Bruce than what it seems that he, that he does in the comics. So, you know, I don't know. I think it's cool as an alternate... Reality, whatever you want to call it, an else world, if you, if you need to use that that term for it just to be what it is. So, yeah, I agree. I totally agree with you. Uh, the the fact that that people look at that the TV shows as some sort of, oh, my dog is barking. <laughs> yeah, the 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 whole. Uh, I'm just going to talk over it. Sure. Uh, uh, the people out that are out there thinking that the TV shows, the movies, have to somehow conform to what's been printed, is I I don't understand that. The, as you said, these are alternate versions of those stories, and and I'm okay, perfectly okay with that. Well, um, I quite honestly, I, if I've already read the comic book, I don't know that I need to see a, exactly a reprint of it does someplace else. Yeah, it needs to be it needs to be its own thing. It needs to follow its own direction, you know, uh, and and entertain us in a different fashion. Why? Why not? I mean, we're so used to comics, especially superhero comics, um, uh, telling or giving us alternate versions of histories. Anyway, I mean, the, the the original, the origin story of the Batman, you know, as as presented in in 1939, definitely is has very little to do. I mean, other than the the major beats, definitely has very little to do with what we know now. I mean, they filled in those those gaps. You know, the originally. Uh, Batman's parents were killed, and then he went off and became the Batman. That's basically the the origin story that we were shown, and and over the years they filled in those gaps, and over the years they've changed those 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 details. Mm -hmm. Why 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 can't the TV shows do something different? Like I mean, especially for Gotham, where it's it's introducing us to to the the setting. You know, Gotham is Gotham City is such a huge part of what Batman is and who he is and why he does what he does. So now we're getting 
we're getting that that the, the filling in of the of those of that information those details so what I I think it's I think it's it, interesting and uh, or potentially interesting it's like I said I've only I'm only a little bit in so <laughs> but I'll take your word for it um, that that uh, it gets really interesting and and so why you know give it a chance uh, don't don't think that the and it's the same it's the same comments I've been hearing about about uh, the you know the movies that are coming up uh, about how you know certain movies or certain characters in these movies should should be like this or they should go with these storylines and or they should conform to what's going on in the comics and I'm like no it doesn't have to do that let them build their own universe and entertain us in in whatever fashion or however the, the you know the fashion takes us uh, in regards to the to to those stories mm -hmm. so uh, what do you think of the uh, I I do know this about Gotham the that the past relationship between Barbara and Detective Montoya, mm. which I, 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 the reason I bring it up is because some people are like, that's, that's stupid or that's dumb, you know, that's dumb because that's those characters never had an interaction, you know. When I, you know, again, to to go back to the how it has to conform to the comics. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, although you know, that's one of those things. The timeline gets really weird because you know Montoya. I mean, I'm not so she's. How much older than Batman? I don't know. I, I yeah. always considered her a younger person, so that's weird. But I mean, it's cool to have those characters in there. Um, you know, clearly the Spectre is walking around too, right? <laughs> yeah, with, with, that, that's Montoya's partner, right? Crispin. Right. Yeah. What's his so, name? So Cypress. Yeah, I can't or remember. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, I mean, so for me, that's like some of those kind of name drop Easter eggs kind of things. You know, I don't have a problem. I mean, clearly the only reason they had a relationship is to drive a a, a plot point. It's mm -hmm. a way. It's a way to create that whatever else that's there. I don't. It's not being used beyond that much. So um, yeah, whatever. I mean, I, to me, that's no. I, that doesn't bother me at all. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. They clearly, you know, they decided that they were going to shy away from, you know, Montoya's sexuality anyway. You know, the fact that the, that that means mm -hmm. that that you know. Barbara's a little more adventurous or whatever than what than what people want to envision her as. I don't care. I mean, how much information for me? I guess how much information and how hard and fast is is Gordon's wife? I mean, how I don't know. To me, it doesn't strike me as is that there is this rock solid concrete a description of what she was or is for that to be a problem for me. Mm -hmm. So well, that's that's my whole problem with with Barbara, to begin with, is that I don't know what she is besides Gordon's wife. Uh, so far, I I've not been given enough. Uh, well, okay, Gordon's wife, and she had a relationship with Montoya. Uh, she seems to be a good person, but what else is there to this character? I want I want. There isn't anything. She lounges around. Really, that's awesome. all they've shown so they're, far. They're, they're awesome loft. She lounges around it, and I don't know. She's unemployed, clearly, or whatever. I, I, thought she, I thought she had something to do with some museum. Well, I guess they maybe I... mentioned something like that at some point that yeah. she was, but I don't know. We don't, we've never seen that or anything. Okay, I don't so know. That, that's my complaint. They need to develop her a little bit more. But but okay. but again, this is the first season of the show. They need to develop all the characters a little bit more. So. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I'm enjoying it so far, like I said. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I fully, like I said at the, at, when we first started talking about the show, I fully anticipated that I would not be watching the show, and I'm surprised that I'm, I want to continue watching it at this point. Yeah, for me, I was totally sour grapes on the thing until I started seeing the first actual ads for it, and then for whatever reason, it just, it, it, it they showed just the right clips of ambiance of it, and I was like, okay, I'm. Now I'm excited to see it, and I've watched it, and yeah, I mean, I can sit here and tear apart every show if I really wanted to, you know, to make it not fun for myself, but there's enough there that 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 I'm entertained by and and like and whatnot that I'm, I'm glad I said I'm just keeping an open mind and enjoying the ride for what it is. I mean, there's clearly things about it that, um, I mean, me and you have friends that, um, you know, absolutely hate the show, so... <laughs> You know, and I guess if I really wanted to go in it and and dislike it, I can find stuff to dislike about it. But I think there's lots of fun, I, lots of fun things in there too. So yeah, exactly. And I think you could say that about any of the shows we've talked about so far. Oh yeah, because none of, of them, shows are, like I said, none of them are like groundbreaking television. You know. Yeah. 
that <laughs> you know I would not put them up with a lot of other things that I think are quality television, and that's they're they're not as far as that goes. But mm-hmm. they're fun entertainment for what a large chunk of what TV is, I, I think. So, and I will stop the conversation at this point. Please join us for the second part of the episode in which we talk about a few other TV shows as well as the run of movies from Marvel and DC up through the year 2020. As always, you can leave feedback by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com or you can always leave comments at longboxreview.com. Thanks for listening.